Well, the Home Office Minister responsible for government policy on female genital mutilation is the Liberal Democrat Norman Baker, who joins me now from Westminster. Do you accept this figure that there could be up to 170,000 victims of this crime in Britain? Well, it may well be right because the last um, calculation by the government was in 2007, which put the figure at 20,000 a year. So over a decade, that would not seem to be too far out. I've actually commissioned a, a, a new study um, from an academic study to try to establish the prevalence uh, of FGM in this country that's underway at the present time. How can it be then that there have been no prosecutions? Well, it's, it's very frustrating because it's child abuse, it's an appalling practice, it's a crime, and it's not justified by any religious um, practice or text anywhere in the world. Um, I think part of the reason is a reluctance to come forward uh, by those who've uh, had, had uh, FGM carried out on them, uh, a, 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 a reluctance to, uh, to provide evidence, a difficulty in securing sufficient evidence to mount a successful prosecution. Um, but I mean, clearly it is very disappointing. I know the present the Director of Public Prosecutions, Alison Saunders, is very keen to see some prosecutions which are successful, and uh, she's taking steps to try to secure that now. Well, do, but do you have data on the number of investigations that have been mounted or the number of victims who have been approached to give evidence when you say that, you know, there's a reluctance? I mean, in other countries they've been more successful, and you wonder if yeah. things like statutory reporting by health services or schools might go somewhere in this direction? Well, there's partly a need to improve education, and that's underway. We've got a European Union grant to, to help with uh, rolling out the message. Uh, we'll be spending money to try to make sure that all communities across the country are aware of the illegality and the fact that this is child abuse. But you're right to raise the issue of the health service. I'm actually chairing a uh, ministerial roundtable early in February with other ministers from other departments, and we are going to look at the issues to do with the health service. I mean, quite clearly, if somebody comes into a hospital having been shot or stabbed, that's reported to the police. Well, this is child abuse, and uh, there's a question as to whether or not uh, uh, those sorts of incidents should also be reported to the police regularly. What about health checks on girls at school? That's also been tried in other countries. Would you support it? Well, that's certainly something on the agenda. I want to take um, the view of colleagues in the Department for Education clearly on that matter. But uh, my view is that when crimes are committed, we ought to try to, first of all, identify them and then prosecute those responsible. Well, I mean, but, well, are you in favour of it? I'm, I'm not clear what you mean by that. I mean... Well, I mean, it's not my department, but I, I understand the point you're making. There is weight behind it. Uh, there are, obviously... Uh, arguments about intrusion of uh, personal space and so on, which have to be taken into account. So I will be discussing that matter uh, with my colleagues at the Ministerial Roundtable in February. OK, uh, well, thanks for discussing that, but stay, stay with us for now. And let me just tell our viewers, there is more on our website about female genital mutilation and fact check have been hard at work looking at the figures. But Norman Baker, of course, you also join us tonight as a senior Liberal Democrat and your party is in a well, an almost unique position, um, tearing itself apart. We've got your former leaders all over the airwaves. Um, David Steele, you know, arguing over, over the Renard affair. David Steele says his suspension should be cancelled. Paddy Ashdown, another former leader, supports it. Where are you? <laughs> I'm busy looking after my constituents in, in Lewis and busy dealing with my job in the Home Office. That's my priorities. Fortunately, I don't have to get involved in this particular matter. What, so you don't have an opinion on, on this? I mean, this is, this is a crisis for your party, isn't I, it? I mean, you can't duck it that easily. I don't think it's a crisis. I think it's, uh, it's not a satisfactory position, but I'm not going to get involved in that matter. I think, to be honest with you, um, the least said, soonest mended. Well, do you, do you support your leader? Can you say that? I mean, do you support Nick Clegg? I generally support Nick Clegg. I think he's a very on good leader this, of the party. Do you, do you support Nick Clegg specifically on the Renard affair, that he is right to have made sure that he is currently suspended and that he must apologise before coming back to the party? I think Nick has got a very difficult job to do and he's wrestling with uh, standing orders put in place long time ago in opposition, uh, which aren't really fit for purpose within the party. Um, so I certainly support Nick. I think he's a very good leader. So you think he's doing the right thing? I think he's making the best of the difficult situation he has. Well, you're dodging the question a little bit. It's quite simple. Is he doing the right thing or not? He's, he's doing the best he can under the <laughs> circumstances. The best, he's do the best he can. All right, well, Norman Baker, thank you very much indeed for joining us tonight. Okay.